Raybot. Thank you so much. It's so great to be in London, and um, especially because I uh, went to Harrods today, and uh, because you know I want to do what everybody does, and um, I went to Harrods and I got a. I got a hat, and this is it. And did you ever get a hat where you you look in the mirror and you're like, wow, this hat almost makes up for a life that wasn't well lived. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, like it's either hats or glasses. It's like, I don't care that my children are in jail. I never had this hat. <laughs> this is what was fucking missing and you think your life has changed a little bit and I'm gonna throw the hat to you and um, when you throw a hat you always have to say what's your name sir uh, Chris Chris you had to think about that oh uh, Chris <laughs> he said. because I put I he wasn't ready for it. you have to be ready I am a loaded gun up here and that's all there are in America guns people are going for milk like this I'm going to get milk! That's what our country is like! Cover me, honey, I'm going to get milk! Do you know they're broadcasting the news like this now? Here's our top story! You motherfuckers! But anyway, Chris, I'm gonna throw it to you and please throw it back. It cost me something like 50 pounds, so... Um, uh, whenever you throw a hat, you always have to say something great, like, I got a raise! Give it back, Chris! Why does he hold it so long? He's a possessive man! Do not have a relationship! He will build a fence around you, ladies! Or gentlemen! But you can never say anything bad when you throw a hat. Like, I fucked your sister! You can't say that! With the hat. That's it for the hat bit. That costs 40 pounds. Because I believe in you people. I will invest 40 pounds per set. And by the way, now that I have the hat off, you're probably wondering, and the answer is yes, I have had a lot of work done. I had my hair removed and my belly let out. You know, I'll tell you why. Because I was too gorgeous. I was a male model and I couldn't get anything done. I would leave the house. Men, women, children, animals would lunge at my cock. They would lunge at it. I would be like, I have to go, go shopping. And they would all want, they were like, fuck me, fuck me, Eddie. And I said, make me look like you people. The average person. I want to look like you. I want to know what it feels like to cry during the day. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but there is nothing like a retweet. I mean, let's say you've been diagnosed with something in your ass. Then you look down at your phone, you've been retweeted 195 times. You're like, maybe this could be a remission. Am I right? There is nothing like a retweet. We used to work the land! <laughs> we used to dig in the earth, now we give a shit about retweets! What the fuck? We used to plant bulbs! <laughs> anyway, this got, this, got retweeted. this got retweeted 195 times, or whatever I said the first time. <laughs> there it goes. Please enjoy it. I'm a professional. <laughs> Why? You gotta keep them brief. <laughs> this one got retweeted 350 times. It's a little longer. I think you'll like it. The only thing stopping me today is genetics, lack of income, time and place I was born, my parents, brain chemistry, and lethargy. <laughs> and I tweeted that because I had a purpose. I just don't fuck around on Twitter. I'm sending messages. And that was a message I hate self-help gurus. I hate motivational speakers. You know the people who are always like, I can change your life with my three-point plan. They're full of shit. What they should really say is, I can change your life with my three-point plan, but 
You already have to have a lot of money and a good support system. My plan does not work for homeless people. Basically, it works for obtusely bored rich people. And I feel like I feel like these motivational speakers would be around no matter what. Like if there was an apocalypse and only three people were left, I feel like there still would be a motivational speaker. And here, here's what it'd be like. Okay. There's been an apocalypse. <laughs> we have no water. We have no electricity. We have no food. Temperatures are outside. Our boiling people are melting. There's three-headed beasts running around. But this is not a time to give up on your goals. <laughs> a lot of people are using this apocalypse to cower in fear and kill and slaughter. I say lose those last 10 pounds. <laughs> now I have a three-point plan to help you get through the apocalypse. Number one, learn how to play a musical instrument. I think you can make a flute out of a branch. Number two, number two, when you play a musical instrument, find a mate. Now I know, gentlemen, that we haven't seen women for about 50 years, but if you play a flute, I believe they will come. And number three, when you find a mate, start a civilization. Funny story. They always have a funny story. <laughs> I was uh, walking in the Forbidden Zone. And I saw a man eating a small child. And I said, is that your boy? He said, it is. I said, do you feel like giving up? He said, I do. I said, what if I had a three-point plan that could get you through the apocalypse? <laughs> He said, I'm willing to try, and today, he is doing very well, staring at the sun. Okay, I'm going to leave you with an impression. Do you like impressions? Yes. Of course you do. You're a human being. I'm baiting you with that. Please stay alive out there. So this is my impression. This is my impression of a lounge singer having Vietnam vet flashbacks. Please enjoy, I'm a professional. Here we go. Lounge singer having Vietnam vet flashbacks. <laughs> There's a bird, <laughs> and that bird is going, Frankie, get down! Get down, Frankie! That little bird, <laughs> it's flying, fly. no, Frankie, no! No. <laughs> No. 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 It goes on like that for 20 minutes. Thank you, folks. Thank you.